But the next entry on our list is definitely not, I would say, a, a safe film by any means, and that's The Banshees of Inishirin by Martin McDonough. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jim, what did you make of this film? Yeah, can I just say what a, what a year it was for Irish film for the Academy this year? It, we've got this one, we've got The Quiet Girl, which I watched, which was an, an adorable little film, um, yes. very simple movie. Did you see it? I did not, but we uh, we actually did a, a Biff episode, Busan International oh, Film Festival it, Review. Yeah, I noticed it showed at uh, at the festival. Yeah, yeah, and I had on. I happened to have a, an Irishman on as our guest for that episode, and uh-huh. he had seen The Quiet Girl and was kind of raving about it. So I was really happy to mm-hmm. see that it made the best international picture uh, list of nominees. Yeah, and then the um, actor nomination for. After Sun. Yes, uh, Paul Mescal. Paul Mescal is Irish. So it's been quite a year. And then I mentioned um, The Wonder, and I didn't care for that film. But it's been quite a year for Irish film. But this one, I saw the trailer for this. It must, I mean, it was ages ago. And I was immediately like, yes. Because right. I love In Bruges so much. It's one of my favorite movies. <laughs> and the two of them together are just absolutely magical. We, me and Cece tried to watch this before she left for Australia to do a movies about places and we watched it and she hated it and (laughs) didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. (laughs) Mm. I don't want to speak for her, but I think it was a, it is a dark film. Yes. At the same time that it's very kind of a lovely film. I enjoyed it. To me, I thought, you know, as I was watching, I I was thinking it's kind of playing out like a fable. It's kind of playing out like, you know, if if you've listened to these old Irish songs that tell these stories of sometimes this crazy, um, depressing stuff and sad stuff. And once I started thinking of it in that way, I didn't take it literally. Right. Because, you know, the violence is, is shocking. And you're like, wait, nobody would do that. But then if you if you sort of take it as a fable or some kind of song or something like that, then it's a little bit different. I don't know. What did you think of it overall? I've got more to say, but I'm curious what you thought of it overall. I was looking forward to this film a little bit less maybe than you were. I did really like In Bruges, but I was not the biggest fan of Three Billboards. I did not like that movie. The last Martin McDonough film. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned it. Yeah. It, it, I found it a mm-hmm. little bit too preachy. I felt like he just didn't Absolutely. seem to have this organic grasp of the social environment that he was talking about. And so mm-hmm. it, it yes. came across kind of caricatured uh, to me. Mm-hmm. I agree. I was just blown away by how both authentic, but also how kind of mythical and larger than life McDonough was mm-hmm. able to make this kind of environment that, that he decided to set the film in. Mm-hmm. Because on the one hand, you are right, it is an, it is a very violent film in some ways, and, and in terms of the characters and, and their interactions, a very ugly film. But at the same time, it's absolutely stunning in terms of the way it's shot. And yeah, it is. The, the way it's written really elevates the material to almost this mythical level. Uh, you know, there, mm-hmm. the reference to Banshees is right in the title. And mm-hmm. Banshees, I, I believe, is, is almost like kind of a... Is it a, like almost like a forerunner of bad things to come or something like that? You know, it's they explained it spirit. in the film and I can't... Yeah, yeah, it's a spirit. Yeah. Yeah, it's a female uh, spirit. They, they talked about it. Mm-hmm. And it kind of heralds the death of, of someone, a family mm-hmm. member or something yes, like that's that. that's it. Mm-hmm. And so there is kind of Irish lore built into right. the film. But there is also the background of the Irish Civil War, mm-hmm. which... I believe also elevates this material into something more than a local squabble. It, it, it becomes ultimately kind of almost like an allegory for the moment we find ourselves in, in terms of all these social divisions and this friend against friend, neighbor against neighbor sort of uh, atmosphere we live in these days. Mm. And in that respect, too, I found it very, very impactful and very powerful I think the performances were amazing uh, down the line. I, I think, you know, you, you obviously have, um, you know, Brendan Gleeson and, and Colin Farrell. 
but then you have uh, uh, Barry Cogan as well. I think that's how you pronounce his name. And Kerry Condon as well. Like everyone was just fantastic. The writing too was just, it was so funny. It was, mm -hmm. it, there's this Irish sensibility that I know where I come from in Canada on the East Coast, there's a lot of that in our culture where there's kind of a very like matter of fact way of talking about things and almost kind of like a an uneducated way of, of talking about things that ends up being way more brilliant and insightful than something that a, you know, quote unquote, educated person could say. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there were moments in the film I could point out, like uh, there's this great exchange where... Uh, uh, Brendan Gleeson and, and Colin Farrell are talking and, and the whole conceit of the film is basically like one guy decides to stop liking another uh, you know two friends and mm -hmm. it basically comes down to one guy saying if you don't stop talking to me if you don't leave me alone I'm going to basically harm myself and this causes a lot of hurt feelings and, and at one exchange where Colin Farrell is drunk and confronts Brendan Fraser at the bar He's kind of begging for an explanation. And at one point, Brendan Gleeson says the word yet. And Colin Farrell picks up on this. He's like, yet he says, like he's English, <laughs> you know? And there's mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. yeah, I remember there's that. all these witty exchanges and incredibly sort of, uh, I don't know, kind of funny bits of dialogue that I just really, really loved. Yeah. It, it was miles away from my, what I felt like the weaknesses uh, that were on on display in in three billboards and yeah I can say more about this too but for me this was top tier filmmaking the elevation of of kind of a very specific place and time to something allegorical and also very relevant in terms of the times that we're living in uh, but you had more mm -hmm. to say about this so I, I wanted to turn things back over to you yeah, I mean a few things just to just to jump off of there. The, the cinematography is is incredibly breathtaking, and the yes. costuming as well. I I think that especially Colin Farrell's clothes, like I want his wardrobe, <laughs> his sweaters. Yeah, his sweaters, fantastic, uh, just fantastic clothes, and he's you know he's playing this just simple guy, and apparently they had that that stuff down to yes. the period and and the time. It's it's a. I also had the strange feeling that there was an element of love in their relationship that couldn't be talked about. And I don't mean like a repressed homosexuality. I, that's not what's going on. Mm. I mean a, a feeling between two men that has, you know, broken down. And I just felt Colin Farrell's character's heartbreak and his just inability to come to terms with what has happened to this friendship that is suddenly been decided what by one person is over it's heartbreaking yes and he can't come to terms with it and so you're right all four of those performances are are incredible and very worthy of their nominations you know if i had to nitpick uh colin farrell and and brendan gleason are kind of performing their same dynamic as in bruges and it's written in a similar way except that it comes in it doesn't seem anachronistic so it's it seems very authentic so I, I imagine it was not that much of a struggle for them to pull this off. That said, they are different characters. And I also think that Martin McDonough has become a better filmmaker since then. Yes. I agree with you on his missteps. I also think that Seven Psychopaths was fine, but it didn't knock me out. But it's, you know, it's, a, it's just a, a weird, very Irish, simple story. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it, it is kind of speaking to a lack of of the local, a lack of cultural specificity that happens in a lot of mainstream filmmaking today. You know, Marvel films mm. are are the very opposite of the sort of film that Banshees is in terms of just, you know, being as anti-local, as anti-specific as possible. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point. When I mentioned kind of the cultural hollowing out that the globalization of Hollywood has brought about. I think this is this is one of the primary effects where you see films that aren't really about specific people, specific places, specific times, but these sorts of kind of characters that are supposed to work for any film market in the world, these very generic spaces mm. and times and characters. Right. That's a great point. The Banshees of Inishirin is, is so refreshing because it is so specific. And... Kind of in a similar way, I think, there are some parallels to say something like Parasite, where by being more specific to a time and place, by being more culturally specific, you end up finding the universal 
in it. You mm. you know, it ends up mm-hmm. resonating with people more. Uh, it, it's kind of counterintuitive in a way, but I think it does make sense. Uh, you know, we can get into kind of the Deleuzian element of, of that kind of point. But I think it's fair to say that he really kind of found universal appeal in this sort of culturally specific milieu. Also, yeah. I think to go back to the point of this kind of being an allegory for our present moment, you know, I, I recommended this film to my sister, and we were kind of talking about it a little bit. And I was kind of making the point that, you know, I kind of feel like this is a, in some ways, a comment on, you know, how divisive everything is and, and how, you know, social media, for example, has divided people so much, but also mm. just kind of the the social fracturing that has gone on since COVID with people locked in mm-hmm. their homes and, you know, getting angry at each other online and, and becoming more and more isolated and alienated and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh it is at the same time, I think, a story about two people who who have this very understandable rift in some ways. I mean, I vacillated the entire film between identifying more with Colin Farrell and being kind of hurt that this this friendship ended kind of unilaterally, that this person walked away, and identifying with Brendan Gleeson where it's like, I don't want to waste my time you know, getting drunk at a bar with this this person, I want to devote my time to something that's going to live on after I die. And so I guess that speaks more to the, almost like the allegorical mythical aspect of it is too, where you have these two archetypal sort of characters. But then also there is that resonance with our present moment. I mean, the Irish Civil War in the background very much speaks to a larger social context in which you know, there is there are these growing divisions and the very dark nihilistic ending where Colin Farrell basically says, I think it's good that people don't forgive each other. I think it's good that they're at each other's throat. And I think in that respect, it is kind of commenting on our present moment in a much more powerful way than, say, something like Everything Everywhere All at Once or, uh, you know, a film like that, because it's not telling us what we it's not reconfirming what we already sort of, the, the common sense of the present, but I, I think it's looking at a, a social environment drastically different than our own in order to highlight the problem in some ways. So I, I feel like for all those reasons, it's really top tier filmmaking. I don't think it should go without saying that Brendan Gleeson is working on a piece of music and that this is his way of, in a sense, doing his what he feels he needs to do, which is his great work that will transcend his life, that will go beyond his own life, and that he is a fiddle player, and Mm. he is willing to cut off his fingers, and and that, in one sense, just is gut-wrenchingly deep, and at the same time, again, elevates this film into this this ode or this song-type quality to the film itself so the film itself again i feel like it becomes you know it takes on a function of being i don't want to say function but it it takes on the significance of a of a song and so in a way it you know i love films that that work the the you know that do a subtle meta commentary on itself without being reflexive i don't like reflexivity in films Hmm. but i do like it when it when it kind of does something where, where the film itself is trying to do the thing that the narrative is trying to do. Mm. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, I so then narratively, he's trying, to, he's trying to go beyond himself, and the film is kind of almost acting this out for him. I don't know if that makes sense, but do you understand what I'm trying to say? It makes sense to me. I, 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 yeah. I think I understand what you're saying. The film is almost uh, yeah. as expressive as the music He's yeah, it becomes a song. The film becomes kind of the song. Yes, yes. And that's the title of the film, is is the name of right. the piece that Brendan Gleeson writes. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of this joke that Zizek, uh, Slavoj Zizek, mentioned at <laughs> one point where I, he was talking about some old, like, Eastern European joke, or it might have been a joke from Slovenia or something like that, but it's, it's where a, a farmer was who, who had serious problems with his neighbor. He just despised him. And somehow he happened upon something like a genie or something. He said, I'll give you 
a wish, but I'll warn you that whatever I give you, I'm going to do twice over to your neighbor. Mm. And so the farmer says, take out one of my eyes. Because knowing that his neighbor is going to lose yeah. both of his eyes. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there's an element of that to Brendan Gleeson's behavior in this, where it's like, <laughs> I know I'm destroying myself, but yeah. this is ammunition. I'm willing to destroy myself if it, if it destroys my opponent. Mm -hmm. This kind of total war quality to yeah. the social dynamic of this place is is again, I think, kind of relevant in terms of the times that we live in.